Now that the dense cloud is complete, uh, first thing you'll notice is maybe it didn't show up right here. It still looks like your sparse or tide point cloud, and that's okay, that's perfectly normal. You'll see here on the left in the workspace pane that the dense cloud and the depth maps, both stages of the dense cloud process, uh, were completed, and they're here. And you can see how many depth maps it used, 85, which is usually the number of the images, and how many points are in the, de the dense cloud. So if you double click on that, now the dense cloud shows up. You know, we want to go between sparse cloud. Sparse cloud it show, still shows everything outside of the box, but this is where you see it only generates inside the bounding box. So this actually looks pretty good. Um, looks pretty clean, and you can start to see a lot of the you know even the features in the sand um, and the coconut. And if you zoom in, then you can start to see more of the individual points. So for the next step, for building your mesh model, if you go here in Workflow and build mesh, um, and then after we'll build texture. But when you build a mesh model, uh, you can build it now with Metashape's new release of 1.6. You can build it from either one using the depth maps or two, using the dense cloud, which is what it, it was always before. So you may need to edit the dense cloud if you plan on building your 3D model based on the dense cloud. And if you are not, then you don't need to edit the dense cloud. But I'll go ahead and show briefly, you know, a tool, some, some basic tools that you can use to just edit your dense cloud. Honestly, this looks pretty good. But, okay, we see a little spot sticking out here, just because the coconut you know, see a little, say you just want to get rid of this little spot. You're going to go up here, kind of where the cursor icon is. And this is where you can do rectangle selection, circle selection, or freeform selection. This is where you can select different parts of your point cloud, your dense cloud, or your model for editing. So I'm going to get a, go ahead and select this. And then you simply click and hold, and you can see it. And anything inside this pink shape that you've drawn is highlighted and then after it's highlighted you press this delete icon and it gets rid of that so you'll go ahead and watch here as it goes away delete it's gone now real quick let's say you highlighted something and then oops you got this chunk and you don't want this um, then just go into space where there's none of your model and just click and drag you know draw again and okay, it recognizes there's nothing. It takes off that previous selection, you know. So you accidentally click that. Okay, click and drag in space, and then it gets rid of it. Great. And then click your cursor again to be able to move around. So if you want to edit the dense cloud, you know, you want to take off that little piece right there. Um, you can use this tool to draw, or you know, you can use the rectangle select if you want to take out, you know, specific straight lines as well as the circle. So you will go ahead and edit this if you're building your mesh model from your dense cloud. If you're not, you don't need to edit your dense cloud. So now that you kind of have inspected your dense cloud and everything looks okay, um, if you want to change your bounding box, now is the time to do so. We're going to go ahead and go up to workflow and then go down to mesh. And so we're going to see another set of settings for building mesh. And so one of the first things now you have the option of do I want to build it? Oh yeah, you can also build it from the sparse cloud. Um, you want to build it from the sparse cloud. You want to build it from the dense cloud, more heavily populated points, which means it's going to be more detailed, um, look more realistic, but in turn going to take longer, or the depth maps. and. First, we're going to do it with the original dense cloud method, and then you'll get this option of surface type. And so you want it arbitrary, you want it looking like a real 3D model, or based on height field, more of 2.5 dimensional, not true 3D. We want it to look true 3D. Your face count is how many faces do you want your model? How much more detailed do you want this model to look? Kind of on the lower end, It'll process quicker, but not look as detailed, medium, or higher end. 
this is a smaller model, I think it's okay to go higher medium. So you can select one of those. If you want to go ahead and put custom, then you can put how many points you want. We're just going to go with high. So interpolation, um, this is something that we can change. It's really only available for the sparse cloud or dense cloud options, so you won't see it in the depth maps. So interpolating is basically, it's going to be filling in spaces. It's going to interpolate, you know, spaces or holes. So you have it enabled, then you want it to fill in um, some surface areas, you know, within a circle of a certain radius around every dense cloud. That's what the manual says. Um, I think this is good. It's the default option. Disabled, you don't want any interpolating. Um, so you're going to have to do some manual hole filling later on, and that's a little more difficult. And then extrapolated, this is going to generate a model with no holes whatsoever. Um, so I'm going to go with enable and go ahead and fill in some of the holes, but some of them it might not. Um, you don't need to worry about the point classes. And then calculate vertex color is you want the model to have color. So we're going to go ahead and click OK and run it. And depending on, again, what computer you're running on or if you decided to go with high or medium or low dense cloud faces, this could take anywhere from a few minutes to it might even take, you know, 45 minutes to an hour.